Hansel on this matter, we are now joined live via phone uh, by Ola Oluwashen Adesomi, who is a legal practitioner. Good afternoon, Adesomi. Good afternoon. Uh, good to have you. Now, very quickly, uh, what's your reaction to this uh, allegation of rape? Um, we're, uh, nobody's really able to make any statement now because it's sub -judice which means that it's under legal um, judicial consideration. And when something is under judicial consideration, it means that the public is barred from making statements or inferences or anything about an ongoing legal, legal proceeding. All right. So we, we hear that uh, this case uh, in question, having been called up to court, is not a topic for discussion, as you're trying to explain now. What ways can such cases like this be handled? Um, what you need to do is what is being done now. Both parties have take, go, taken it to court. It's now for us to wait for the court to bring out, you know, listen to both sides and give judgment. Right. Away from this now, what is the procedure generally for bringing a case like this to court? I mean, that of alleged assault and rape, especially against, you know, a public or political figure. Um, if you're talking about what you need to prove in rape cases, there are three things basically in any rape case. One is that there was um, penetration. Two is that it was by the accused. And three is that it was without consent. Generally, these cases are a bit difficult to prove because you need to get your evidence at the early stages. You know, you need a medical report, you need um, um, a swab, semen analysis to be able to prove that it was, you know, that um, the prosecutor or the accused is the person that actually did it. And then you need to finally prove that you did not consent to it. All right. I know from experience you have um, you have handled cases, bigger cases. How common, uh, you know, uh, how common are prosecutions that have to do with public or heavyweight in our society? And um, if you're saying, I, I, I want to understand your questions as being. Um, the general perception that when there is an imbalance of power, the poorer person tends to be disadvantaged. If that's the question, then what I'll be saying is, based on the law itself, nobody's above the law. However, what we have is um, situations where one person is unable to, based on financial status, to get good legal representation. And that's why you need NGOs and human rights organizations to help people that would otherwise not have been able to afford it. Because you need to understand that the courts and the law are not listening to sentiments or emotions or social media followings or... Um, what the public perceives. The law is dealing with facts, evidence, and what the law says about the issue. So what you have is a lot of the poor or disadvantaged are not able to afford it. And, you know, that is where they get disadvantaged. All right. Thank you so very much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts there. Thank you so much, Tim.